Hello everyone and welcome to this roundup of 2021 on this here YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed already, please make sure to do so. It really does help us out and you'll get to see more of this stuff. Um, new setup today as you can see, so I'm just testing it out. So I thought I'd do this New Year's roundup here. So we have had a lot of cars come and not a lot of cars go in 2021 and we've had a lot of bad things and a lot of good things that have happened. So I'm going to take you through all of that and I'll leave the links to the videos and I'll put stuff on the screen, etc. And you'll see some of the footage and stuff from those videos. So it's not just going to be me blindly talking. Anyway, so first we'll take a look at the low lights. Now, one of the, the definite low lights for me was when the lovely Vitesse was sat outside um, in the snow and a bunch of yobs decided to come and crowbar or giant screwdriver from Home Bargains, the door open and try to hotwire it, which they of course failed. So they tried that, tried to get in it. I had to go out there. Obviously I phoned the police, they did nothing. Um, phoned the police, they, there wasn't much they could do to be fair because it had been snowing all all night and you know I'd just noticed etc. and they were long gone. So I'd put a bit of a bag over the door, immobilized the car as much as I could and then, of course, the next morning, we came to a very bent door. The door, actually, if this is a roof, the door was bent like that. And what we had to do was we put our best um, our best hat on, because I've had a lot of car crime happen to me in the past. I'm no stranger to it living in the city. And um, I'm also very um, thingy with trying to negate it and trying to make sure there's things in place to stop that from happening, deter it from happening. At least I hope so. So... We got the, put our legs on the door, pulled that thing back, and then we got it all working again. They, they'd managed to break all the, the steering wheel cowling and everything, so luckily we've got a new bit of trim as well, which is absolutely brilliant. So that is definitely one of the low lights for me. Um, the other one, the other low light, has to be the Rover 75 breaking down on, this isn't technically 2021, this is more 2020, but it literally happened on New Year's Eve. So I'm going to say it's 2021. So the Rover 75 decided to chuck all of its auto box fluid all over the floor in an Asda car park, which was irritating as out. So it did that, which is really annoying. Um, turns out with the old air blast style coolers on the 75s um, auto boxes, they the weird connections, they get a bit weak and then they just shoot off because obviously it's high pressure. So it dumped all that and we had to get that side. So that was a good 300 quid, I think it was, to get all that sort of nice supply the parts and everything. It was a bit of a, a bit of an intensive labour thing. And then while it was sat, after I'd um, had enough of it the first time this year, the um, the spring decided to break. So get some spring protectors for your 75. I haven't got any yet. I know I need to get some what, other things. We destroyed one of our tyres as well with that. So if you have good tyres, make sure to get a spring protector. Or if you generally, you know, need um, your car not to be immobilized by itself or end up nearly in a horrible accident get some spring protectors so i think that's all of us the other low light for for me as well was and my wallet was the um, 75 again breaking down so one of the things with buying a car like the rover 75 or any of these modern classic executives is you end up you know, with some with some weird service history. Now, Rachel, the previous owner, she did as much as she could and she didn't really know much of the history because it didn't really come with any. Um, so the car, of course, hadn't had its belts done or its pulley. Um, so that, obviously, the, the rubber breaks down on the inside and then they start to rattle and wobble and then eventually it tears all the belts. So it tore all the belts and left me stranded. Luckily, I've got AA, so they picked me up and sorted that out. But I had to turn it with that power steering, which was an absolutely crazy um, thing. I thought not having power steering on the Maestro was was bad. But yikes, that was something else. So that's another low light. But the, the arguably the lowest of the low of the low lights this year, the pit of despair, that is the Vitesse, had decided, um, well, it didn't decide. I think it just wants out at this point. 231k and it's had literally the world bearing down on it and um, the Vitesse had its catalyst stolen if you didn't know that's a 91 model a J reg so the Vitesse my one had an optional catalyst fitted 
it was a, the, the later models, the later 800 Vitesses, 827s, there was a Vitesse executive, um, it, was, it was an internal thing apparently, look it up, AR online, good stuff. Um, they had like this special model where it became more luxury focused. So my car, um, it became more luxury focused, the Vitesse models in the later 90 to 91, and then obviously they had the 820 Turbo, which was more of a sport, sporty car, but the Vitesse was you know fast luxury. Anyway, um, I'm getting off topic here, but my car had a catalyst fitted and some idiots decided to come and cut that off, but they jacked it up on the sill itself, which really annoys me because I had new sills on that car. The previous owner, um, I think it's Rose, I can't remember. Anyway, they had the sills fitted and they had them all red oxide, oxide and all that stuff, really, really nice. It's really irritating because I just put a lot of money on, I think it was about 400 quid, on some lovely Pirellis for that car. Now I was just gonna go get them fitted and then that happened. Sod's law, innit? But yeah, that's another one of those those issues that they, it comes to us all, unfortunately. The catalysts, the cats, they go, they go off in the night or during the day. Things happen, but there we are. So that had to get removed to secure storage ASAP. And I think for me as well, that really did, um, I would say it was a bit of a wake up call that we can't have these, the cars have become a bit, um, of course, we've had two incidents with one car in the same year. These cars have become too much to have on the road, if that makes sense. You occasionally get people walking past like the Maestro and stuff like that. And they see them, and they're you know they're looking at them, and you can set you can tell when someone's um, out for bad intentions. Usually two a.m. They walk past, look at look at the all the security has got on it, and, they, and just walk off because they expect it not to have all this stuff on it. So it's becoming quite hard to keep keep a lot of these cars where they are on the road and stuff. Because I prefer to just have them all stored, which I am doing. I've got majority of them stored at the minute, but. That was really a wake up call to get that thing moved to a unit because it is an exceptional car and it's something I'm really, really proud of. And I love that. I loved an 800 forever. Wanted one since that specific model since about 2018. Finally got my hands on one in 2019, 2020. I think it was 2020, yeah. It was April 2020, paid, paid it February. So that's another thing as well. Really, really just a sad moment. But after that, of course, we had it moved to, to storage and we can finally put the time and attention into that car that it deserves. Moving on then to the highlights of the year and the um, new cars that have joined us and the cars that have left us. So one of the cars that left us is the Blue 75 um, BU03RYX. So that went to someone in, I think it was London? Was it London? Yeah, it went to someone in London um, I told him specifically the car needed transport him. He didn't do that. He got someone to, to some guy who was incredibly cheap to come and drive it down. And that guy then disappeared for a couple of days and blew it up essentially, which is irritating, I know. And then it turned up uh, at the guy's house with a failed head gasket and loads of other issues. Really annoying. So that's one that left us. And that was fully sorted, that car, when I got rid of that. It didn't have an MOT on it, but it would have flown through one, personally. <clears throat> but another car that... Um, in fact, no other car has left us this year. A car that did leave us the year before, however, was the Fiat Coupe 20-valve turbo um, S924 GEU. That, I just sold it because I've done a Fiat Coupe before. I'm not one of these people that sits there doing the same car over and over and over and over again because I kind of get a bit bored of it. Um, I think I might do another ST1 at some point, I might do you know another 800 maybe, but who knows, or another 75, but you kind of get a bit bored of them after a while. So the Fiat Coupe, the turbo, I had a choice between my 20 valve and that turbo, and I just thought, you know what, my 20 valve's nice, it's had so much work done to it, I prefer the power delivery, I prefer not having a turbo because there's so much that goes along with it. Um, which most people don't know with those cars. So I decided to, it was time to, to get rid. So I sold that to um, <clears throat> two young lads and it's gone to, I think it's in Nottingham at the minute. But anyway, so that's that. They're the two cars that have left us. The cars that have joined us, however, um, usually you're supposed to replace like for like. We've kind of gone a bit overboard. So the car, one of the cars that have joined us is the wonderful Austin Maestro, Mimi the Maestro, who is one of the best cars I've ever owned. 
100%. Absolutely love it. So that car is still with us at the minute and plans for that. New headlining, which I've got. I'm going to get the fabric and stuff sorted. So with, with Mimi, the maestro, we need some sun visors. If anyone has any, please let me know because I really need some sun visors to fit the headlining. So I've got, I need some sun visors. That's one thing I need. And I also need some, um, I also might need a rear wheel arch repair panel, which is going to be annoying. And I also need some wings for a plastic bumper model, if anybody could sell me some. But other than that, she's all right. So the plans for this year, I'm going to get a lot of the rust cut out and it all sorted out. And then who knows what will happen. The thing is with the Maestro, is it's a car that is so simple, it's just a pleasure to have around. Little A plus engine, one, two, seven, five. Absolutely brilliant. No cap, just an exhaust with a silencer on it. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Simple as anything. No electrics. Harry Moss stereo, banging them tunes out. Brilliant car. Just love it. And it never, never, never lets me down. So we got another um, car in, which is the SD1. So that is a 2600S. It hasn't been on the road in I think about 15 years, if we just judge it based on the MOT. Um, it also ha hadn't run off its own fuel supply. Um, it was previously owned by Phil, um, who was on here as well. I'm not sure if he's uploading videos anymore, but shout out Phil, brilliant guy. Um, so we've got that. We are really well on the way with that. I'm so excited because this is the year. Mark my words. This is the year the SD1 launches back onto the road. So, so far on order, we've got... In fact, let's go, let's go over what we've actually done to it first. We've had all the rock cut out. We've had a new slave cylinder, a new master cylinder for the clutch. Um, now the clutch works. We've had, obviously, that, that bulkhead panel re-welding in. Refurbed the engine bay. Serviced the car for the first time in a trillion years, I think. Um, new HT leads distributor, um, coil, um, all, the, all that jazz rotor arm. All that stuff, all the stuff that you really need to do for a car like that. That's been in storage for ages. Um, what else is there actually? There's so much we've done to that car. Gear knob, thanks Steve. Top man Steve, got a gear knob on the way, which is brilliant. So that car runs, it drives, and it doesn't stop. Because we've got some brake parts on the way. So we've got new discs and pads. I'm really after some EBC um, vented discs for it. I'm not sure if you need to, there shouldn't be any conversion needed for those. It's just some vented discs rather than solid ones. Um, I'm going to get some green stuff as well. That'll be pretty, they're pretty good pads um, from my knowledge of those. Then, of course, we've got the rear brake shoes to do. Cleaning up the brakes and stuff, just the general jazz. None of the calipers are seized from what I know anyway. They're not binding or anything, so that's top notch. We have another few things as well. A new, a new what I like to call the, the, um, the trunk or the um, the um, hose for the for the intake. So there's that's on the way. Loads of stuff on the way for that car, and it's going to be absolutely amazing. We've got to retrim the headlining, sort the doors out, sort the brakes out, and then get it running just right. And then we can take it to the MOT after we've got a set of new tires on it. Because you know how much I like tires, and I like a good set of matching tires and all the tracking to be done on, on all of these cars. We've even got fog lights as well. Brilliant. Got some fog lights. So for the SD1, that is definitely coming along really nicely. And it's one of them things where it's not being done, it's not being sort of cranked out, we're doing it right, um, even if we do make mistakes along the way. So we're doing it right and we're doing it well. And that SD1 is going to be back on the road this year after 15 years, I believe, being off the road. Another car that has joined us that I did not expect to join us is the lovely Ford Cortina. Which is um, which, which we've bought for Katie. So that's Katie's car, and obviously we're. I mean, this is basically like we've been together so long. It's like communism joined us, literally the back end of the year in December on the 23rd of December and got home. I think it was on the 24th. It got home or the 23rd, late 23rd, and we got that home. We've got loads of things to do on it. Um, in a video you will see next week, hopefully, or on Thursday, depending on how shooting goes for the latest 75 video. We have a lot of, you know, things to do with that. We've had a lot of, a bit of poking around, a bit of stuff going on in the background, and there's, there's a lot of work. I, I thought it was gonna be a project you just 
smash through and everyone's like, yeah, it's done. Get to a festival and you're exceptional. No, it's just not like that now. Um, and that's kind of good and kind of bad, but I'm not, not too bothered. It's a challenge, but we like that. That's Katie's dream car. Perfect color for her, perfect color for us both. Amazing car, perfect model as well with it being the, um, the L, I think it's either an L deck or an L. We still haven't got to that mystery yet, but which hopefully you'll be able to help in the next video that we've got coming out. What about the cars that are still with us? Well, the 75's still here. Um, of course, she's always gonna be here, the gold 75 that is. The intake's been cleaned by Steve. The, from Arctic by the way, shout out to him, brilliant. Amazing help on the forums and amazing help in general. Really encyclopedia of, of Rover 75s and MGZTs. Anyway, so the 75 is still with us. Jamie did some T4 magic. I got a um, reinforced intercooler um, intake pipe thing, um, which goes to the EGR from the intercooler. It's an, it's an intake pipe, I think. Um, it's one of them things anyway, I got that from, I think it's Jules that I got that from on eBay. Um, brilliant stuff, amazing, amazing addition. And with Jamie's T4 um, magic and ECU stuff, it really, those supporting things really do add to um, the car. We also got them four Pirellis on there, the P0s, and we got the, all the wheels aligned. And it is like nothing else. It's not the same car it was when I bought it. It's so refined and so brilliant. And when you get all the major problems sorted out, and you know, I implore you to spend money on these cars because, especially the 75, because it is an appreciating asset, they're only going up. But with my 75, you got all the belts done, the pulleys done, all that jazz, oil gets changed every year, you know, coolant gets changed every year, everything, etc. All of that gets done. And I got that air filter in from Pipe Cross as well, like nothing else. And then you start to drill down on the smaller things as well. Of course, we've got that Android head unit as well with Apple CarPlay, which is amazing. That really does help. Um, and you've you've got that you you move on to the little things, like I was just about to say. Once you've got all the big things sorted, you move on to the little things, and you get to things like the door, the little door, um, the door pins. They they rattle about a bit. You put some, you take the door card off, or you lift the pin all the way up. You wrap some. Um, what is it, anti-rattle tape around it. Push it back down, it's perfect. I've even lined some of the um, cubbies with anti-rattle tape. The um, glove boxes on the 75s, they go a bit funny, they start to rattle sometimes. Lined that a little bit. It doesn't look bad at all, actually. It's like a, it's a nice felt, so doesn't rattle. Nothing rattles in that car anymore. And if it does, I'll find it. And I will murder it with tape and other things. But the 75, a few plans for it this year. Might be getting some... Um, Halo rings and quad xenons installed by um, Rick at um, MG Rover Custom Car Parts. I'm in contact with him. Need to check in on him now that I've finally, um, well, when you're watching this, I'll, I'll actually have my manual leave. So I can use manual leave. I know, right? Changing jobs twice in one year is brilliant. But the 75, general stuff really. I really want to go on a road trip with it this year as well. And I'm hoping Pride of Longbridge is on, which will be immense because I'll definitely be going in that car. Another car, of course, that's still with us is the 827 Vitesse. It's had a rough year, to say the least. Um, but we're getting there. New parts ordered, new stuff on the way, cleaning it all up. Respray, I'm hoping in April, May, June time. I might get it done for my birthday. I'm going to see if, if, I can, if I can get it so it's finished on my birthday. So that's like the ultimate birthday present. I think that would be so cool. Um, of course, getting financially destroyed by a car is a pretty good birthday present. You know, the Vitesse, not really much to update you on that, other than it's been an absolute riot of a year in 2021 with the Vitesse, as you all, you know, you all know about that. Um, the other car that, of course, is still with us is the Fiat Coupe 20 valve. Brilliant car, I haven't touched it. Drive it, take it out a few times, up and down the road, the private road, up and down that, you know, shake the cobwebs off, put it back. Far too scared to bring it out, but this year, is in 2022, this year coming, or this year as you're watching this, um, that car will be back out again, which is amazing. So I'm gonna really enjoy bringing that out. So what a car as well, what a car. You sort of forget that you own these, I know it's such a stupid thing to do. You forget that you own these cars, and then you see them, and then you're like, oh crap, 
I, I have the key. I have the, I have the keys to this. The logbook's in my name. This car's mine. You know, it's brilliant. And that, even though it's just a fake coupe, I'm not bothered. It's cool. I love it. I've always wanted one. Um, so that's for the cars that have stayed with us this year. Um, is there any more? No, there's a, there are there are a few more, but they've, they've never appeared on the channel. Anyway, so you know, of course, we've been joined by the Cortina and stuff, and we've also had another few things. So now we move on to the highlights of the year. So for me, the highlights were probably Glenn and Glenn's collection of 75s and his immense knowledge of 75s and really getting to know people in the 75 and ZT community more and more because it's just a brilliant community of people. Absolutely brilliant. Just one of the best car communities I've ever been a part of. And I've, I've been a part of a few, but the 75 and ZT community, it gets a bit washy sometimes, as they all do, but this the best i'd have to say especially the forums always incredibly um insightful <laughs> especially when apparently you don't close the door properly i know i've read and um, but i'm going to start being more active on all the forums as well you know auto auto s word auto shite all that stuff i'm going to start being more active on these forums that i've been lurking on for years and i just haven't posted and i'm going to start posting big summaries because some people don't want to watch these videos that's fine with me but I'll enjoy, I enjoy posting the summaries on Facebook, on, on, you know, eventually on these forums, which I will start doing. So another thing as well, another one of the highlights of the year, um, well, I don't know, I moved into the ponds for, the, for this year, the new year. Um, another highlight, definitely meeting people, um, Hubnut Social, um, what is it called, Festival Learning Exceptional, loads of other things, meeting brilliant people like, like Alistair, like, um, you know, like, um, I think it's Chris, yes, it, three, two, one, Chris, all these brilliant people that are just part of this big car community of just average cars, you, you know, the, the unexceptional becomes the exceptional, if you actually look into it, all the little things that go into making these, something as simple as a Cavalier, something as simple as that is incredibly complex, and to make it that simple, it has to be very complex, but also simple at the same time, if that makes sense. That's why these cars are so interesting, and I think a lot for me, a lot of this stuff for me is is, is just just loving all this 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 crap. Essentially, it's just brilliant. What what um what is what is not brilliant? And the people are so passionate about it. I'm really passionate about all these cars, and I've just met some brilliant people this year. Peter as well, Austin Maestro, Pat, um, everybody with the Austin Maestro is amazing. What a brilliant community the Austin Maestro community is, I am. I thought it was going to be, you know, well, outside looking in, I did think it was going to be really good. Let's be real. That's one of the only reasons why I keep the Maestro, is just because I like all these guys, like Dan, etc. And the the Maestro the Maestro is has been one of them cars, a real, real highlight this year. When we first got our, you know, that fresh off the boat moment of driving it home through Leeds um, with um, an exhaust nearly falling off. Um... That was something else, that was just a memory. Really funny memory. And the fact I had to put my clutch in as well to, to deaden the noise because some people were about. Um, that was just brilliant. What a brilliant memory that is. Um, another, another, of course, general highlight. We've got Glenn's collection. We've got Tim's collection. Seeing Tim's brilliant VAS. One of the best cars I've ever seen ever in my entire existence. His lovely Marina. The lovely BXs. All these wonderful cars that I've seen this year. The GTST, the Corrado, Mel's Metro, just brilliant. Another highlight, of course, is definitely the SD1. Finally getting moving and finally starting up. Of course, I didn't even think I was going to get an SD1 this year. I kind of couldn't be bothered with buying one, but that one came up. It was previously owned by um, by Phil, brilliant guy. Also has a channel on here. Um, you should check him out. I'll probably put him in the description. Not sure if he's still posting, but shout out or oh, kick something. Shout out to you. Brilliant stuff. Um, didn't think I was going to get that this year because I kind of couldn't be bothered with it. Um, my hands are a bit full at the minute, but the SD1 moving finally after I think it's 15 years, something like that. Epic stuff, and we're so close. We're so close to getting it fixed and getting it all sorted. Clutch works, everything works. You, you've probably seen the videos. I'll link all the playlists in the description below, by the way, so you can go through them if you haven't seen them or you're new here. If you're new here, subscribe, please. Thank you. Um, no, I'm joking. You don't have to do anything like that, but please subscribe. Or I'll, 
I, I need I need subscribers, man. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, but yeah, subscribe if you like the content. But we're here, um, and we've had a, a lot of fun this year. The other highlight for me as well is the Cortina. Didn't think we were going to get it. Didn't think we were going to get one in all, at all, really, because we kind of couldn't be. We kind of couldn't find one at a decent price. What well, a price that isn't, you know, out out of this out of this planet. So we got the Cortina. Um, I sent it to Katie on Facebook, literally within an hour of it being posted. I called. I walked out of my out of my office, called her. Katie, have you seen this Cortina? Then sent her it. To, have you seen this Cortina? It's amazing. It's the perfect colour. It's the perfect model. It's the one. It, well, we kind of wanted a pre facelift. It's you know, it's sorted. It looks brilliant. And then we've got it. Katie's car is here, the Ford Cortina. We don't know if it's an L or an L Decor or what it is. I think it's probably an L or an L Decor, either or. I think that, that much is true. But that is a brilliant thing. It's a Ford that didn't destroy my bank account, which is what well, it kind of did. Um, it's a Ford that didn't ruin my, ruin my life financially. And that was one of the things this year that's been... Um, being quite, was quite a trip, especially that Chris, so-called Christmas episode we were trying to do. We were going to film a brilliant drive through the Peak District, you know, go through things like Castleton and all that stuff. It would have been amazing, but it broke down in Southport, in a parking lot next to Halfords, and Halfords couldn't help us. Nobody could help us. The only people that could help us was ourselves and the AA man who came three times. Three different AA men came. Just brilliant. But that, even though at the time it's inconvenient. God damn, it's fun. So that's about it. That's the summary of this year. Well, last year, 2021. This year, we've got a lot of stuff on the way. New things you can see right now. Look at this. New stuff, eh? New stuff. But we've got a lot on the way and we've got a lot of things we're doing. So thank you for watching. Keep watching. Remember to subscribe for more of this and have a good year. My New Year's resolution is to not have to call it AA at all this year.